Hello, cybersecurity professionals. Hope everybody's having a lovely day. Today, it's going to be very interesting because the topic is very interesting. And it's going to be SQL injection or SQLI or structured query language injection. Let's get started. So what is a SQL first of all? So SQL, it is a standard language for accessing and manipulating databases. And what can a SQL do? Well, it first of all supports all the major commands that is select, update, delete, insert, where. It can update the records in a database, delete the records in a database, create new ones, create new tables or tuples in a database. Uh, it can even store procedures in a database. So overall, it's a very powerful language. So what is a SQL injection? So simply put, it is a code injection technique that might destroy your database. Uh, it is one of the most commonly used web hacking technique and it is to simply put it's a placement of malicious code in sql statements via web page input i'll give you an example the sql injection usually occurs when you ask a user for an input like a username or user id and instead of a name or an id the user gives a SQL statement that you will unknowingly run on your database. What makes it so dangerous is because because the security vulnerability that exists in the website um, or on the database, it allows the attacker to interfere with the queries that an application makes to its backend database. It generally allows an attacker to view the data that are not normally supposed to be or not normally able to retrieve using normal technique to give you some data around it. So it's been found that about 27.8% of all applications uh, have a SQL vulnerability on an initial scan. The initial scan that you do on your web applications so think about it about 20 more than 25 percent of it's just vulnerable sitting out there uh, ready to be attacked isn't that scary now before i move ahead i would like to take a quick moment to explain the difference between xss uh, and sql injection I've made a separate video about XSS. I'll link it on the cards right now over here on the top. But this is the basic difference between them. XSS or cross-site scripting, it is a client-side vulnerability that targets the application user. Okay, it's a user-side vulnerability attack. Whereas in a SQL injection, it is a server-side vulnerability attack that targets the application's backend database. Hope that's clear. So now, how does it affect your business or how does it affect the security? Well, first of all, it affects confidentiality, which is, you know, since SQL databases generally hold sensitive information. So loss of confidentiality is a frequent problem with SQL injection vulnerabilities. Authentication. If poor SQL commands are used to check usernames and passwords, it may be possible to connect to a system or another user with no previous knowledge of the password. Isn't that dangerous? Authorization. If authorization uh, information is held in a database, it may be possible to change this information to a successful exploitation of a SQL injection vulnerability. Integrity, most important. Just as it may be possible to read sensitive information, it might also be possible to make changes or even delete this information with a SQL injection attack. Now in this video, I wouldn't be covering the technical aspect of it as in not the, the actual commands that can be used, but just to let you know, a web form can be used to inject SQL or structured query language injection commands to exploit the vulnerability on a database or on the website. 
No, let me try to explain how the entire SQLI injection attack is being carried out by malicious bad actor. So we got three parties involved, of course, as known as hacker, the vulnerable website, and database. The hacker will first try to go ahead and identify the SQL driven uh, website and injects its uh, malicious uh, SQL query via a Winput or a web form. In step 2, the malicious SQL query is validated and the command is executed at the backend database. And the last one and the most scary part which is the hacker is granted access to view or alter records or that data administrator. Now at this point of time, I would highly recommend you check OWASP. If you don't know what's OWASP, well, I would doubt if you're a security professional. But if you know, that's well and good because it publishes the top 10 vulnerabilities that exists in the website, okay? So OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. Yeah, I'll leave it down below so that you can all check it out. Now this video wouldn't be complete if I don't talk about how you can prevent the SQL injections. So I'll leave you all with 6 generic tips which you can use. First one, you train to and maintain awareness, you know, validate input. To keep your web application safe, Everyone involved in building the web application must be aware of the risks associated with SQL injections. You should provide suitable training to your staff and your developers. Prepare a query. Don't trust any user input. Treat all user inputs as, as untrusted. You know, and any user input that is used as a SQL query introduces a risk of a solution of a SQL injection. So treat uh, input from an unauthenticated or an internal user the same way that you would treat a public input. Create prepared statements. Use whitelists, not blacklists. What I mean by that. Uh, don't filter user inputs based on blacklist. A clever attacker will almost always find a way to circumvent your blacklist. If possible, verify and filter user input using strict whitelists only. Bind the parameter. Adopt latest technologies. This is pretty simple. To understand older web web applications older web development technologies don't have SQL protection built in on them use the latest version of development uh, environment and language and add and, and the latest technologies associated with that environment execute queries employ verified mechanisms so wh wh what do I mean by that that is don't try to build SQL protection from scratch. Use modern dev technologies and that can offer you mechanisms to protect against SQL SQLI injection attacks. Use such mechanisms, you know, instead of trying to reinvent the entire wheel once again. And the last one, which is a given and a very obvious one, fetch results, which is scanned regularly. SQL injections may be introduced by your developers or through external li libraries, modules, or softwares. You should regularly, I mean regularly, yeah, as per your company schedule, scan your web applications using a web of vulnerability scanner. Uh, the popular ones are pretty good at caching the regular vulnerabilities. And now with that, I come to the end of SQL ingestion attack. Do let me know of your feedback, because that's most important for me. Um, and let me know if you have any future videos you want me to cover any more topics. All the best for your interviews and your exams. Bye now.